for whatever reason, it's unusual for me to preach on the Psalms. And yet it is the Psalms that are a part of every single Mass. We always have a daily Mass, weekend Mass. There's always a responsorial Psalm. And it is indeed part of Scripture. And this week as I was praying through the readings, it was the Psalm that really struck me. The Psalm response even. If today you hear His voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear His voice, harden not your hearts. Really, two parts of this that really strike me. The first part is there's an assumption here. If today you hear His voice, there's the assumption that God speaks to us that we can hear His voice. I'm not sure why it is in our culture that when we talk to God, it's called praying, but when God talks to us, it's called schizophrenia. And yet, throughout the scriptures, throughout the history of the church, there's an assumption that we can hear God speaking to us. That God does speak to us. After all, who is God? He is Father. He reveals Himself to us as Daddy. And He is a good, good Father. If God is a good, good Father, means He doesn't just bring us into existence and then watch us grow up and say, I'm going to watch you from a distance and see how you do. No, He wants to have an intimate movement in our lives. He wants to touch us. He wants to speak to us. So why is it that we don't hear God speaking to us? Well, because the world shouts, God whispers. God is whispering to our hearts. Most often when God speaks, it's not through the audible voice that we can hear with our ears, but it's deep within our hearts. Sometimes in words and sometimes not. But God speaks to us deeply in the silence of our hearts. But there's the key. In the silence. Do we allow ourselves to be silent? St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta said the fruit of silence is prayer. We need to allow ourselves that silence. Years ago it was a lot easier. Now we're surrounded by noise. Well, like the Grinch would say, noise, 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 noise. We're surrounded by that noise. Years ago, back when I was growing up, when I would go to the doctor's office, if I didn't want to be bored the whole time I was waiting for my appointment, I had to bring my own book. Because, God knows, you didn't want to touch any of those magazines that have been touched by every other sick person that's gone through that doctor's office before you. So what do you do? You, either you sit in silence, waiting, or you had something you brought with you. Today. All we have to do is pull out our little phones and there we're on the internet. Suddenly everything is right there. And there's nothing wrong with that in and of itself. But too often we're tethered to it. I actually pondered uh, after the last Mass, I was pondering, should I bring out my phone as part of my homily and do one of these like, oh, excuse me, i got to take this. <laughs> to show that would just be rude. That would just be rude, and so often that's what we do to Almighty God, right? We never allow Him to speak. So if we shut off the TV, the radio, even shut off our phones, just spend some time in silence. It takes time to get to recognize the voice of the shepherd, but we will start to recognize him speaking to us in the silence of our hearts. If we spend silent time with him every day. If today you hear his voice, he has a word of love for you and for me.
Think about the person you love most in the world. Maybe it's a family member, maybe it's a friend. Think about the person that loves you the most in the world. God loves you more. God loves you more. More intimately, more deeply, more passionately, more tenderly. God loves you more. And He has a word of love for us. This is why I've encouraged people to have the, uh, the uh, Mass journals. Because God wants to speak to us and helps us to focus ourselves to listen for His voice. If today you hear His voice, harden not your hearts. And that's the second part that, it, that this touches me, is that even when we do hear God speaking to us, a lot of times we harden our hearts. We don't want to hear what God has to say to us. And yet God's word is a word of love. And yet we say, I'd rather do it my own way, God. I'd rather be in charge. I'd rather take the things that I want to take. I, I know in, in my own life, there are so many times where I've known there's something that I needed to give up, but I didn't want to hear it. And I rejected that call. Because I said, I'd rather my own way. I'm more comfortable with it this way. I didn't want to step beyond the comfort zone. And that was hardening my heart. And what's that saying? It's saying, I don't trust your love, God. I don't trust that you love me. That you want my good better than I want my good. I don't trust that you see my life and have a plan for it. What are the things that harden our hearts? Maybe it's that we don't understand or don't believe one of the hard teachings of the church or something from scripture. Maybe it's that we're too attached to some pleasure or some entertainment or some distraction and I say, I, you know, I don't want to have to give any of that up. Maybe, maybe it's a good thing that's in our life, but that we've placed too high in our priorities and put it in the place of where God should be. And with that, if we're not listening to God, if we're not allowing Him to move in our lives, we're hardening our hearts and saying, No, I want my own way. God says, But I love you. But I love you. Don't you trust my love? Don't you trust that I will be there to fulfill your every desire? Don't you know that I have your good in mind? If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts.